for individual income taxes. That means we're losing a huge internal control. We're not using accounting software oftentimes. Some people do, and that's gonna give a high level, a much more accurate level of assurance that your income statement is correct because the software is gonna force you to use the double entry accounting system and you'll have a balance sheet. And if you're doing bank reconciliations, you have even a higher level of assurance but many times people don't, right? So that means, and so what we're on the tax return side of things, as as we do the as as we do the data input, and notice, by the way, using software to do the double entry accounting system, you can do that for personal books as well if you wanted to. You can put your personal financials into the accounting software and use the double entry accounting system, you know, in a in a similar fashion that way. But again, on the form ten forty we're gonna be driven by income and we're gonna be driven by forms, oftentimes W-2 forms. And so it is, you know, it kind of is what it is. More complex tax returns, you know, the bookkeeping will be more important. And then if you have business tax returns, then of course uh, it, the bookkeeping becomes more, <laughs> more important. So that's gonna be, that's gonna, but so that means that when we do the data input, we wanna give a double check somehow. So oftentimes what I would do and what I've seen, I've worked at many CPA firms, often many of them will have an outside calculation to kind of double check possibly in Excel or some worksheet so that you can re-enter this information again into another system and double check that you come out to the same taxable income for both calculations. And then we've got the tax before credits and other taxes. So the tax being calculated, again, you would think that would be somewhat the end, but no, we also have credits. Now the credits are gonna really complicate things because they're not part of the, they're not like a deduction. They're similar to dedu deductions in that they're both good. We like deductions, we like credits, but the credits are calculated, are put in place after we actually calculated the tax. Therefore, the credits are going to have a much larger impact from a dollar to dollar credit. In other words, if you had a $1 credit versus a $1 deduction, the $1 credit is going to be a much higher value given the fact that you're going to get the whole dollar's worth of benefit as opposed to a dollar deduction, which will simply decrease your taxable income. And then you're only going to get a benefit based on whatever your tax rate is based on the progressive tax tables and all of that kind of stuff. So, so the credits are great from a, in that we want credits, but when you try to think about what the impact is on the income tax formula, credits are going to greatly complicate the whole, the whole process here. Uh, and then we have other taxes. Now we're talking here primarily, we're talking about an income tax when we're looking at the form uh, 1040, but sometimes there's other taxes, you know, that could be in play here such as the self-employment tax is gonna be one of the big ones uh, because if you have a Schedule C type of business, then in taxable income, you have your, your income coming in from your business, but the IRS also wants their payroll tax equivalent from you who they see as basically the employee of your own business. And therefore, since you didn't give yourself a W-2 and withhold payroll, Social Security and Medicare, they're gonna they're gonna calculate uh, self-employment tax, which is basically payroll taxes for self-employed individuals, calculating both the employee and the employer portion. So if you have a business or are subject to self-employment tax, that is a huge addition down here and will complicate things a lot. So if you're a tax preparer, you want to be thinking: Do I want to deal with businesses? Do I want to deal with tax returns? that have business entities, whether they be Schedule C's, flow through entities, S corporations, LLC's, or corporations, partnerships, flow through. do I wanna deal with those or not? If you do, even with Schedule C's, it will complicate the tax return greatly. So you might be saying, hey, look, I just wanna crank out as many returns as possible. I'm not gonna take on business returns, and then I'll, I'll focus on volume, or, you might say, okay, I know Schedule C's are complex, 